All right, at the risk of putting the blessed God Florida State Seminoles on the thumbnail, it is week zero, and that means that we playing ball, y'all. Black hand side, black hand side, uh, 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 uh. Football is fun because we're going to start playing football on Saturday, 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 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, noon for y'all on the East Coast, and some of y'all are going to still be in bed on the, on the West Coast, but this one kicking off in Ireland. Still ain't quite figured that one out. The ACC got this fascination with Ireland and the other kind of football because they don't really be playing our kind of football like that out there. Although, Kansas City Chiefs, they got themselves a rugby player out there. That man is nice. Like, Louis is nice. Y'all going to figure it out because I played sevens in, in college. I follow along with some of the rugby in the Six Nations and whatnot. That dude got skills. I just hope he can hold up because we be playing with pads over here for a reason, dog. And it ain't because we soft. It's because we be hitting hard. I'm really fascinated with Florida State going into this season for a number of reasons, not the least of which is DJ Ui Ungulale is starting quarterback at Florida State. And while we are here, yes, I can say that man's name. I've been able to say that man's name for four years. I know that y'all know that I got some problems with some of the folks' names, but I get there. Eventually, I get there. I keep on it. I stay on it. It's for real with me. Understand me. Now, I think we're going into a season in which DJ Uyunglele is going to be for Florida State what Will Howard is at Ohio State, which is to say he might need to do a little bit more than Will Howard because they just loaded up there. It's like a college football ultimate team where some dude spent $1,000 on packs and shows up to champs to give you the beat down. Like, if I see you show up an ultimate team with Quinshawn Judkins, Miles Garrett, Lamar Jackson, and then I got to go work on the outside against dudes like Malik Neighbors. And on the back end, you got Caleb Downs. I know that you, Xavier Watts, I know you pay for this. What are we doing out here, man? I, it, your Jimmy's is better than my Joe's. What I, be, I ain't got nothing to do with me being on the stick skills. And I understand there's some folks out to be like, well, if your stick skills was really nice, you could beat anybody with anybody. Nah, dog, the computer be cheating. I got to get y'all on this thing because you understand. You would understand. If you was on it, you would understand. But the thing that I want to know from Florida State going into this game against Georgia Tech is, is Florida State capable of making a statement to start the season 2024? Because I'm thinking about LSU last year, and that wasn't no statement, but you know, it, it, it still, they ran the table, right? I'm thinking about what we learned from this program and what Mike Norrell has really been about, and that's been building a winner. They're in the best spot they've been in since Jimbo Fisher had them on the way to the national championship. And that program felt like it was all in on winning it that year. This year doesn't feel like they're all in on winning it, but they certainly have a lot to show. Okay? You go 13-0, and and then you get left out of college football playoff. Half your football team bolts, because that's what we do during bowl season now, and you get beat down 63-3, to having a hard time just fielding the team because you had to put a bunch of walk-ons out there against the Georgia damn Bulldogs. I don't envy them. Then he went back into the portal, and he retooled, right? We talked about Uwe Ungalale. He added for it felt like half of Alabama's 2023 roster. Roydell Williams, I expect to get some shine. Fentrell Cypress is a dude out there on the corner, and y'all going to figure out that Patrick Payton is, man, possessed out there on the edge. They got guys. They got dudes. I think Malik Bilson is another dude out there that could be outstanding for them. What's going to be fascinating about this game against Georgia Tech is Georgia Tech ain't no easy win no more. Georgia Tech has moved into the we will fight back part of their journey. They out there speaking their truth. They won seven games for the first time since 2018. The first time since, my good Paul Johnson. Pa Paul, Paul Johnson, that they was this good. And they was running triple option with him. Only man I know that looked at triple option, saw Calvin Johnson, said, you know what? Whatever we doing, we throwing the ball to him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's Jimmy's versus Joe's and Megatron with Megatron. I want to see if you can win this game by double digits. I need you to put this game away. I need you to enforce your will running the football. And I need you to stop Georgia Tech running the football because that's their strength. Okay, you make Haynes King make some plays back there, then it can get out of hand real quick for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Brent Key has been doing a great job out there, but this is really about level setting for what I think is the number five team in the country and what the AP thinks is not, right? I think that some folks are underestimating what Florida State can and should be about in 2024, and that's just vengeance, dog. Straight up, it's vengeance. You left them out of a playoff that they were perfectly acceptable to be picked to play in. You did it because you don't have Jordan Travis, and then you don't like what you got behind him, like Tate Rotomaker, who's out at Southern Miss right now. 
I get all of that. But as we tell the kids over and over again, it's a team game. It's a team sport. You need more than one person to win. But y'all telling me you need that one person if you want to be in the college football playoff, which goes against everything that we teach in college football. And that is the reason they could feel aggrieved. And Mike Norvell ought to be absolutely raging going into 2024. But it's got they got some hiccups going into ACC. One Another week zero matchup we're going to talk about here a little bit later in the show in Southern Methodist. But I'll start with this. I rank Florida State at number five in my ultimate 134. And I'll rank Clemson at number 19, which is to say that I think those two programs have the best opportunity right now to make the college football playoff from the ACC. Uh, we'll talk about, again, SMU here in a bit. But FSU finished ranked number 10. Or excuse me, AP ranked them number 10, and, and Clemson, uh, they ranked at number 14. I just think that there's something there. I think that when, I think, when I'm looking at Mike Norvell and I'm asking questions of his team, Every single year, they've answered the bell, right? Last year, I was telling anybody that would listen, they ain't played nobody. I can't trust them. They ain't played nobody. But I'd also held fast to, if they beat everybody in their league, they need to be in the college football playoff because they will be undefeated. And that should have been the long and the short of it. But it's not the long and the short of it. And we're getting into the 12-team playoff, which means it would be really difficult. To, it would be impossible to not include an undefeated Florida State in your selection. But... Let's not be coy about this. They are up against it because we already think that there's going to be at least two teams from the SEC and the Big Ten, maybe three, and then the conference champ from the ACC, and then we're not sure, right? Then it's about how do we feel about that loser in the conference championship game versus the number three team in the SEC or in the Big Ten, which could be Michigan, could be Ole Miss, could be LSU. There's a lot to go up against, so I'm already starting them up at five. I think between the guys that you've added and then a big game against Southern Methodist on September 28th, you have everything that you need to convince me. To say nothing of, you get past Georgia Tech, who is good, if not ranked, SMU, who is good, if not ranked right now, and then you beat Notre Dame on November 9th, nobody's going to turn anything down but their collar when they play you, or excuse me, when they expect to put you in the college football playoff. Like, they're, they're, it's just going to be a foregone conclusion. I really want to see DJ Uwe Anglele grow into the kind of player that I thought he was going to be coming out of high school, full stop. I think we've got to see flashes of that guy in 2020 when he was the number two rated player in the entire country behind Bryce Young. And not only is Bryce Young playing the NFL right now, that dude won a Heisman Trophy. I think that ought to be where you are looking if you are DJ Uwe Anglele. And quiet as it is kept, he ain't led nobody to no conference championship before. You know, that that needs to change. You got to be able to take this Florida State football team and turn them into a monster that we all respect and fear for what happened to them last year. I, I, I can't say this enough. I know we're leaning into the feelings part of the schedule, but it mattered to me that they were left out. And it, spite, spite is a hell of a drug. Spite will make sure that you get a lot done. Meanwhile, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, they got to know that this is coming. Now, I ranked them 53rd out of my 134, and that's when these kinds of rankings become useful. You get to see number five versus number 53 in the start comparison between that, but then I'm taking into account what their schedule is like, what league they play in, what's going on around them. I think Haynes King, again, in that offensive line, they're going to be okay. That offensive line's got more than 100 starts as a group, two all ACC players on it. We'll continue to think about what they may buy or may or may not be, but they finished really strong last year. After starting two and three, they finish seven and six with a win against Central Florida in the Gasparilla Bowl. I think that if you can go get a W against Florida State, we immediately start talking about you as a contender for the ACC championship, right? I think that even could drop, could vault them up into the top 25 because we're in week zero and we're not going to see another ranking at least for me, from the AP, until after Labor Day. But it would give us a lot to think about. And it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's not out of the question. Northwestern shocked Nebraska in Dublin, right? Notre Dame ran Navy into the ground. It can go either way, is what I'm saying. But this is a great opportunity in a conference game for Georgia Tech to remind people that they do more than make engineers in Atlanta's uh, most prestigious P.W. White, P.W.I., Ooh, Fro Freudian over there, because I'm, I'm over here thinking about Morehouse, Spellman, Clark Atlanta, Morris Brown up the road. I can keep going on that one, but you, you get my point there. I've always thought that Georgia Tech 